Hi, I'm James Schilling Law, and I'm here with Cindy Diost, who is the president and CEO of American Queen Voyages. And if you know what's going on, uh, uh, Cindy arrived at American Queen uh, literally last fall in in October. And this is the first chance we've really got to sit down and talk with her because there's a lot going on. And she has now been there now for uh, almost uh, five months now, four four or five months. And she's really making an imprint on, on really what I think is one of the classic American cruise stories in the business. And we're going to talk to Cindy about what's going on with American Queen Voyages, because they have uh, not just the classic uh, uh, ships that you can see behind me, but they also have lake and ocean and expedition. So we're going to talk about that and more on Insider Travel Report. This is where it started. This is where I'll be. This is all to me. Now, first of all, Cindy, uh, congratulations, because we haven't really talked since you got the new post, and it's it's great to see a familiar face uh, doing this. Uh, first of all, talk, talk to me about uh, what is American Queen Voyages today? How many ships and, and boats, sometimes they're boats, as as your uh, chairman, John, uh, John, John Wagner, says to me, it's boats sometimes, it's not ships. Uh, how many do you have and what kind? Well, James, if I can start, I want to thank you for this opportunity. This is actually so exciting for me because it is the first conversation that I've had that really will be for our travel advisors. Mm -hmm. And those of you that know me know that I started in cruising at CLIA and my biggest, I think, passion was around supporting our travel advisor community. When I joined CLIA, we had about 7,800 travel advisors. When I left, we were over 50,000, excuse me. 40,000. Right. The team has continued to grow through their contribution through education and tools, and they are above 50,000. So first of all, I want to say thank you to the travel advisors that might be watching us today. We are the first on the river, the longest, and actually with the greatest capacity on the river. And we had a beautiful portfolio, but then we had the opportunity to expand. Mm-hmm. So when you look at our heritage, it's really been around the rivers and then we've expanded, um, you know, to uh, oaks, to our oceans and our lakes. And then in 2022, we had the inaugural launch of our Alaskan uh, light expedition product, which has exceeded all of our expectations. So we clearly are a different company with different offerings than we've had just literally a year or two ago. Yeah, and absolutely. And, and and to some travel advisors, it's a good to see exactly your the breadth of your product because you do have r- your river cruise boats, you've got lake uh, ships, ocean ships, expedition. And and I guess for them, it's going to challenge like how, how can they successfully sell all these different cruise categories? So that is my favorite question because when I talk to travel advisors and I think the value that they provide really is – in looking at our products, whether it's American Queen or across the cruise industry, it's difficult for a consumer on their own to find the right cruise. And that's because we have so many options. You know, if you look at American Queen on our own, we have over 200 itineraries. So what I say to travel advisors, do your homework. Do your homework and understand all the different options, all the different itineraries, the seasons, the ships, you know, what really um, the experience will be for your your guests. Why are they traveling? So then look to your guest. Why are they traveling? What is their budget? Where have they been before? What type of aesthetic? What type of experience are they looking for? And for as long as I've been in this industry, I refer to my travel advisors as the matchmakers. Sure. You find a great product and you match it with your client's preference, their budget, again, their reason for travel, all those things. And when you do that successfully, you will have a client for life and cruising will have a client for life because there is nothing more relaxing, beautiful and exciting at the same time than taking a cruise. Yeah, and now you have a lot of different options. And so let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, just give us some examples or, or the itineraries you offer on the rivers, on the lakes, and obviously uh, in the expedition. Well, when you think about the expedition, and I'll start there because it's the newest in our family, what is exciting, the ship is small, and we intentionally made this, you know, a hybrid. We're not the um, traditional expedition where 
It's very, very physical, very, very cold. There's a very limited time of year to go. We wanted an offering that was a little bit broader, but it was also very authentic. So we're able to pull into the very small ports, ports that you may not have heard of before and you won't see on anyone else's itinerary. There's active, um, exciting options for excursions, but also something that is open for people of, you know, various skill levels. So the idea was to attract a broader group. The other thing that we're finding from our guests, we had many guests, and this is important for travel advisors, that transitioned from the river product to the light expedition. Oh, really? And the feedback we're getting, just as I'm going to take my son in July, people are interested in bringing their families. So I think that was an expansion, not only of a product, but also a different adventure, a different experience. So don't hesitate when you're talking to your guests that previously have only been on the river to talk to them about that kind of next step into an expedition type trip. I think the wildlife, um, the onboard education, you know, the partnerships that we have so that they'll actually learn what they're going to be looking at and seeing and experiencing before they get there adds to the trip. When we talk about the rivers, again, you have kind of your Northwest Passage, which is one experience very different than in the Midwest as you're going on the Mississippi. And then again, when you look at going through Pittsburgh, are you going to Ohio, going on the Ohio River, each one of them is a unique experience. And I think The biggest mistake as a travel advisor you can make is to assume that if you've been on the Mississippi, then you're done with river travel. There is such a different experience. And I will tell you for me, one of the aha moments, and I've only had the opportunity to be on two of our ships because I joined in October as we started winding down the season. But there are moments that are unique to each vessel. So I see the queen behind you. Yeah, that's a, that's actually a picture I took on one of my one love of love that. I said, in fact, I should have a much different background. You've got the best background today. But as I stood actually on the Queen and I was up at the top of the vessel, it was sunset. It, the sky was pink. The water was calm. We could see vegetation. We could see, you know, fresh the birds the homes, the lights that are coming up in the yards, that people came out to the yards to wave to us and to say hello. It's that type of experience. Mm -hmm. And then you have different towns along each itinerary. When I think about the Ohio and going to Pittsburgh, people have a perception sometimes about a town. I first thought Pittsburgh was, you know, known for the steel industry. And that brought a perception to my mind. Recently looking at Pittsburgh, It is this charming, beautiful, quaint little town with independent shops, businesses, little coffee shops, places to go and see original art. So I think the point that I want to make, regardless of the river that you're going to go on, it will be a different experience. Our boats, each one of our boats are very unique and different. Yeah, I think, as I mentioned, I think of the Duchess as kind of our cosmopolitan, sleek, beautiful, a little bit more formal and more contemporary. I think of the Queen. When I went on the Queen, it was a step back into an antebellum mansion. So you have the charm of the itinerary. And then each one of our ships is different. And that's what's unique about the American Queen voyages Every one of our ships is a different experience. No, absolutely. And I can vouch for all of the river ships myself. And my partner, Alan, has been on the uh, lake ships. So uh, he knows them as well. So you definitely have different experiences, although commonality of service and food and things like that, that I think makes it all uh, put together. And that's something I think travel advisors should best understand. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, your arrival here. Uh, What was the opportunity you saw when you accepted the offer to become president and CEO of American Queen Voyages? Well, having um, served as the lead for the industry for four years, I had the opportunity to become very familiar with brands across the industry from ocean, river, Europe, North American, and I've traveled on many of them. I've had the love of cruising. It's been in my heart. It was my passion. So as I thought about what I wanted to do with my future, 
And I saw there was an opportunity here at American Queen Voyages. It kind of put everything together in one perfect package for me. It's North America. A North America focus right now, I think, is really dear to me and that people are rediscovering North America and really want to continue to spend some time here in North America. Travel to Europe is still a little unpredictable unpredictable, and certainly complicated. So there's so much still to offer right here in North America. And I think right. we're seeing actually our international market to North America grow. So that was attractive for me. Mm -hmm. The fact that they are, I have a love of the small ships and I have a love of the small ships because it brings us to an intimate relationship with our destinations. Right. And for me to think about a portfolio that had a variety of offerings was in North America, was the small ships that I love that were also unique and distinctly different. And then to work more closely with our destinations to curate one of a kind experiences it was a no-brainer. No, and it, it it and you landed in a great place, Cindy. I, I really, it's one of my favorite companies, one of my favorite products, and I'm so happy you're you're there and and can really you know put, put pull it all together. It's been one of these things where you know there have been a lot of changes on American Queen over the years. I've seen them. Uh, yes. but now you're there, and and actually, uh, you know, you're uh, what 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 do in your background do you think really best prepared you for the role, the Clea, uh, the Clea role certainly. And you were mentioning to me your most recent role where you were uh, you were uh, down in Cape May, uh, which was also something that that kind of gave you a little bit of a background in Americana and well. Absolutely. In fact, it is those two combinations. So in cruising, I got to oversee the industry and understand the importance if we are gonna participate in the industry, that we are a good partner with our destinations, our ports, our travel advisors, and I have the love of cruising. When I spent the three and a half years with Cape Resorts, as you and I were talking a little bit offline, it is a very, very similar portfolio on land. It is Americana Seaside. We had seven properties that grew to nine. Each one of them was unique, distinct, and had a curated experience. Mm -hmm. We had those for families. We had experiences for couples. We had a, a beautiful upscale farm. So everyone had a different experience. Our owner was probably one of the most brilliant product brand um, inventors that I would ever, ever work with. Mm -hmm. He understood just intuitively how to deliver value to the guest. And he was relentless about that. It wasn't about filling the hotels with a certain type of people. It wasn't about a price. Those were the great results that we saw, but it was giving that experience to each one of our guests. And we had families that had spent generation after generation coming back to Cape May as the destination because of the portfolio and what we offered. I feel we have that same opportunity with American Queen Voyages. We are a family of offerings that are distinct and unique, but we have, as you said, James, a brand standard from service, amenities, you know, our curated experiences, and we're going to continue to enhance that. So it really was the, the great experience I had at CLIA. Then again, kind of, I think, supported more strongly by the experience I had at Cape Resorts that when I looked at American Queen, I didn't see any other opportunity that would have delivered that all in one place. Absolutely. Well, as again, as I said, you've been in a great place and we're looking forward to what you're going to do with it. Now, the, the company has made a, a few changes in its executive ranks recently. Uh, do you kind of have your team now that you want in place? Are there more things to come? And who, are, who have been some of your key hires? So I think that's also an excellent question. Change you know, obviously, when you look at a change in your organization, offerings, your products, your brand, you have to look at your talent within. And there have been both a combination of self-selected and then, you know, involuntary changes. And that's natural in a business. We are building the team that I could not be more proud of. When I look around, you know, we recently announced a change in our vice president for human resources. And for me, that's critical because that's the core of what we do. That's our, our team ensuring we have a great place to work. People have the tools, the training that they need. 
you know, we also announced uh, Angela Composto as our new vice president of marketing. I know, I know her well. She's a good friend. Yeah, absolutely. Her resume speaks for herself. She's been here a week and just the energy, enthusiasm, and skill that she brings is probably exceeds what I had even hoped for. Um, we talked about our project management officer because, again, we have diverse offerings and we are driving to a new vision for the company. That means there's a lot of different things that we're working on as projects and we need to take a disciplined approach. I think as we all entered into um, the pandemic mm -hmm. and we had invested in new vessels and new itineraries, you know, we kind of lost some time sure. to launch these things. So it was important to me that we take a step back and we really put the discipline into the structure as we roll it out. And that means that for our guests, we're going to be asking them more for input from our travel advisors. Give us the feedback. You know, I was on um, the Duchess and the Queen and really just only had two days on each ship. But I learned so much in the two days. We had so many high level loyalty members that I did a little focus group on the, on the boat. Sure. And they talked to me about what they loved, what they said. Here's what we don't want you to stop. Here's what we would love you to start doing. And here's what, you know what? You can stop. Yeah. And it was so good because on the Queen, I got different feedback than I did on guests from the Duchess. So on the Duchess, they told me about expand the activities, get more bikes, make it a more formalized program, allow us if we want to go on our own to have better maps, better guides, better places of interest, you know, look at some ideas of perhaps picnics and things like that. to really elevate that kind of on my own experience. When I was there on the queen, it was recognizing that we're going to have more and more travelers that as they're, they get older, they're losing some of their partners. Mm -hmm. Look at the pricing for the singles only. So it's yeah. everything from the product to the pricing and, you know, one of the things that you've seen recently, which is also led by this new leadership team, is a simplified all-inclusive pricing. Well, I was I was going to go to go to that next question. It was that you did uh, uh, kind of you announced that uh, American Queen Voyages will now be more inclusive than it was. And, and what, what do you what will you now include in a typical cruise? So, you know, we've always had. You know, all the inclusive dining, the 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 beverage programs, the first night stay. There's so many things that have always been included in the program. None of that went away. What we wanted to focus on was simplicity for the guest. I don't have to think about gratuities. I don't have to think about an extra charge for my port taxes. I don't want to have to think about that. I want to know what my cost is up front. And it's simple. And for the travel advisors, it's commissionable. Right. So we wanted to look to our travel advisor community, but we also wanted to look to our guest. And as a travel advisor, this gives you one more reason to sell American Queen because it's easy for you. It's easy for your guest and it's all inclusive. No, and then absolutely right. And I think you know, all inclusive is, is the way to go. I think even as as you get into higher end cruising, it, it or there's everyone realizes that we're and even in premium level now. I, I tell you, there there all these programs now, and even some of the what we used to call contemporary have programs that are you know so you don't have to suddenly get this huge bill at the end of uh, exactly uh, at the cruise that that might be more than the cruise itself in some cases. But that that that's on the the contemporary now. You you uh, a few a few weeks back you you actually sort of put forth kind of your vision for the future for American Queen Voyages. I thought it was an excellent uh, press release you put out, uh, and you talked about strengthening your reputation and the relationships to continue to continue your growth. How do you do that? So you know, if I go back to my earlier comments, and I'll even kind of repeat, it really is the three P's for me, starting with people prestige, and then our ports and partners. They're all very intricately related. You can't have success. It's a three-legged stool. When I talk about the people, it's certainly our travel advisors. It's my own internal team. And, and as I'm talking to the travel advisor community, I have to mention, you know, I talk about my leadership team. Kevin Smith, my vice president of sales, grew up in this industry. And right. there is not a greater advocate for our travel partners. Um, so I'm so proud of him and the work that he does. And I continue to get really positive feedback about how easy he and his team are to work with and how supportive. But when I look at people, 
I need to make sure that my own people are taken care of. I need to make sure that we have a positive relationship with our travel advisor community. It's also our ports and our partners because when we visit a destination, so this gets to your question, James, about elevating the reputation, we're very proud that today we contribute $135 per person, you know, per day to our destinations, but we know we can do better than that. And I'll give you a quick little example that I hope will resonate. I was in Paducah when I went on one of our early voyages, and I had the opportunity to visit this beautiful little mom and pop bakery Mm -hmm. owned by the family for 30 years. And I think now the daughter's involved and there will be a future where she will take over for mom and dad. And it's a really unusual little spot in that it is in the morning, this fresh baked goods that are amazing and kind of a coffee shop. And right. also kind of some merchandise. And then about 10, 11 o'clock, it switches over. And the other side of the house is opening up for lunch with this very distinct deli. I would love to have a partnership with this group. Sure. Where perhaps we're offering their fresh pastries. We're ringing a bell at 7 a.m. Fresh pastries are on the, on the vessel. So I think telling their story, allowing them to come on board, tell their story about the business and then invite people to join them for lunch, for other, you know, meals. That's a way that we can help the small businesses. Yeah. Right so then. my commitment when I talk about our reputation and our brand is that we leave every destination better than before we arrived. And I think we've done some great work. And this is a commitment from my perspective on the entire cruising industry. Right. We bring so many visitors and we need to make sure that we're really look, working, looking for ways with those local businesses to have them succeed. I will say that one of the most memorable moments for me as I was kind of going to some of the little shops along the way, people would say to me, oh, are you from the boat? <laughs> there you go. Now, I didn't tell them what my role was or anything about, you know, my my position. I just said, yes, I am. And they said, we love it when the boats are in town. Of course they do. Yeah. So for me, that was that that kind of reaffirmation that we have a role to play. We can do more. And I'm super excited about it. So when I talk about building on the brand, it's really working with those ports, those partners and those businesses in the destination. Well, well, you had me at breakfast pastry right there. So that had me there too. I, 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 I think I could get off the ship very nicely and go to that place and have a nice <laughs> coffee and a breakfast pastry and then maybe follow up with a deli. It is it's fun to walk around those towns. Now, you talk a little bit earlier about how you're going to work with travel advisors and, of course, their clients. And you've already done your kind of informal focus groups and to create a better cruise product. Uh, uh, talk a little bit about a little more about how how you're going to do that. Well, I'm starting off over the next month and a half in partner calls, in-person visits. I've made a few already. We are trying to really get with all of our key partners, understand why they love to sell American Queen, what the obstacles are, make sure we're putting tools in their hand, getting feedback on our agent portal, making sure that they have the sales assets that they need. I think the second week in January, we're kicking off all of our travel advisor training for way season Mm -hmm. to make sure that questions are answered. And again, people understand what the different options and varieties are. It's really making sure that we have an engaged relationship. I think in fairness, you know, Kevin and his team has just done an amazing job, but we have been absent a leader for a bit. And leaders all have different priorities. I am absolutely, you know, focused on our our travel agent community, our trade partners. That is a passion and a priority for me. It's where I come from. So getting out and meeting everyone and getting that feedback, formalizing some advisory groups to give us that ongoing feedback combined with sharing with them what our guests are saying. No, absolutely. You, You know, as the travel agent community, there's feedback from their guests, but we have feedback that we'd like to share. And I think it's all around engagement and closing that loop on communication. Absolutely. And then the goal, of course, is to create this sort of stronger, sort of even more positive image and reputation, because you are starting from a pretty good place. I think a lot of people really like uh, American Queen voyages. Uh, they, they like the concept, uh, you know, domestic cruising 
is still hot, even po- as you mentioned, even post pandemic. I mean, people are starting to go to Europe more, but uh, as you said, Europeans are coming here. So that's uh, right. You know, where else can you get a, a cruise on the Mississippi or a cruise on the Great Lakes? So, uh, so I guess that's where you're heading for. Now, obviously, to do that, you also have to keep keep up. You know the the, the ships and uh, what specific upgrades are you planning for ships like American Duchess, which I guess it debuted in 2017. And and how about the other ones, uh, you know, even the classic American queen herself? So I think, again, that's one of those really brilliant questions in that um, I have to start by saying whenever I think of uh, improvements, it's always going to be focused on the safety of our guests and our crew first. So it's the maintenance of the vessels and making sure that um, they are safe and they are able to travel and they provide that great experience. And then for me, it's less about the hardware than it is about the service level offerings, the training of the staff, ensuring they have the tools that they need. And I'll I'll tell you why I feel so strongly about that. Um, I mentioned I was on the ships. I had no expectation, had no idea what I was going to see when I got on the ships. What I saw took me aback, and it's a moment that I will never forget. It was one of, you know, certainly my proudest moments already. The connection between the staff and our guests is something that cannot, it, it's authentic and it yes. cannot be forced. They greet each other with first names and with hugs. They, we had one situation, um, a, an individual had a medical emergency and all the right people were there for this woman. She traveled with us many, many times. What she said was, you know, I'm so happy you all are here but I need Miss Barbara. I thought, who's Miss Barbara? Miss Barbara had been, you know, one of her hotel directors that she had known across several different ships because our staff will move across the ships at times. She said, as long as Miss Barbara's here, I'm okay. Now this is a woman who had actually fallen and and broken a bone. And she was, you know, she was in her eighties. So this could be a serious injury for her. The comfort for her, was seeing Miss Barbara's face and she knew everything was going to be taken care of, whether it was the transfer to the hospital, taking care of her travel partner, making sure she got food as she went on to the hospital to wait for her for surgery. Everything about that moment was what I knew we are doing right. And so when I look at continued investment, it's making sure that our staff understand who our guests are. They get the feedback of what they're looking for when they're on the ships and making sure we're delivering that in a very personal way. So when we've talked about the American Duchess, and you know, at this point, it's still in design mode. Everything that we're looking at is really gonna be around the service levels. How do guests feel better and more at home than they did previously? We started with the all-inclusive pricing. Got simplified, we don't have to think about that. What does the butler service look like? What does the welcome to the ship look like? Do we have mixology events? Do we think, are we doing things that are more interactive and unique on the ship that they've not had an opportunity to enjoy before? With Regina, who is our culinary Uh, I was going to mention Regina. It was one of my favorite people. She is awesome. Love Regina. Regina Charbonneau. I I have stayed in her little inn when she had one back in uh, uh, down there. It was just amazing. And she, uh, we actually, one of our top interviews, I'll just tell you, one of our top interviews for last year was the interview that Alan, my partner, did with her. How do we bring more of Regina's recipes to life? How do we curate experiences that might be off the ship to actually be onshore dining through, you know, engagement with Regina? So I wouldn't focus too much on the ship hardware Right. Because they're not the ones that deliver the experience. Obviously, everything needs to be to standard and safe, and that's a priority. But it's really more about what happens when you're when you're on the boats. Absolutely. Now, we already talked about what you're trying to do with economic impact. Uh, you're, you're trying to improve the bakeries. That's that's the most important thing as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> but uh, no, you're right. You, you, to give back to the communities that you're you're uh, w- where you have your ports, whether it's on the lakes, whether it's in Alaska, whether it's on the rivers, I think is crucial. And, and also get that feeling, as you said, uh, of when the ship comes in port or the boat comes in port, uh, the rest of the community knows it and they're looking forward to it. 
That's right. Uh, uh, you know, you want that kind of, the, and and I did experience that. They all knew we were there. Now, granted, one of one of the, those cruises was in the middle of COVID, so <laughs> we had to be tough. kind of distant than we would normally That's be. Tough. But we but we did visit a beautiful some beautiful mansions and some other things. And we had a great time uh, in in Natchez. I, I was going to say that. That's where Regina uh, had her place for a while, and, and we visited another house there that was just amazing. Very the hospitality was incredible. But uh, so, is there anything else you want to tell? Well, uh, we have 110,000 travel advisors now in our database, and uh, we have a lot of them who have expressed you know, interest in selling river, expedition, and small ship cruises. But anything more you want to tell them about American Queen Voyages and what you hope to accomplish? I think what I'd like to close with is a thank you. A thank you to you for doing you know, um, a video such as this and engaging with the community, and a thank you to all the travel advisors We couldn't be successful without our travel advisor community. What I would offer is let us know how we can help you grow the business. You know, when I talk to my team, we are an extension of each one of you. You have your entrepreneurs, you have your own businesses, your small business. We're so excited that that is the heart of America, right? Our economy and our growth. And I want to see everyone get back to where we were and keep growing. Let us know how we can help you. 2022 has been a tough year. There's no question about it. Coming back out of pandemic and coming back with a wider variety of ships, we've had some challenges. There's no doubt about it. But look at the investments we're making in the leadership team. Myself, couldn't be more excited to be here. We are here to stay and we're here for you. So more than anything, thank you to you to all of you for the support for the industry. Support, I know you're going to show me and my team and let us know how we can help you. Absolutely. Well, and and where can travel advisors go to get more information on American Queen Voyages? I assume the URL. You can go to our URL and it's American, uh, sorry, it's aqvoyages.com. Great to see you again. Congratulations. And uh, while I may not see you uh, next month, I think my partner, Alan, will be aboard with you and John Wagner. And I'm sure that's going to be a fun all time. Unless I just tell him I'm going to stow away and I'll see what happens. And we, as I told, as I told you earlier, Alan and I never are in the same place, but uh, well, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? We, we travel a lot. Uh, again, congratulations and good luck uh, with American Queen Voyages. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report.